Do you have your Bibles? If you have your Bibles, repeat after me. Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I am a believer, not a doubter. I am a doer, not just a hearer. And my life is the better. After having heard the word of faith, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. I can see clearly now. Open your Bibles to Genesis, the first chapter, first through the fourth verse. That's Genesis, the first chapter, first through the fourth verse. When you have it, say, I got it. I got it. Five people got it, Lord. Five people. Yeah, these Bible scholars. And some of them say, well, I got it memorized, Pastor Leo. Don't worry about it. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. <laughs> and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the water. Then God said, then God said, let there be light. And there was light. Verse 4, and God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. What is the purpose of light? What is the purpose? The, the, the simplest way to describe light is to say that light illuminates or makes visible what is already there. Let there be light. Just like when you walk in the room and if we turn off all the lights in here and you, you can't see anything, it doesn't mean that there's nothing there. It just means you can't see it. But when I turn on light, I can see clearly now. I, I can see that if I would have took one more step, I was going to walk into those chairs. I, I could see last night. Was it last night? Yeah, last night I was walking in a house that I'm very familiar with, mine. And I turned too fast. And there was a wall right there. I felt like somebody had just built a brand new wall. In this house, I've lived in for eight years, and I, and I, I boom, I said, oh, you there? And I was glad that, yeah, that's what I was glad about. I said, I was glad that there were no witnesses <laughs> around. I'm going to take a little detour right quick. I'll be right back on my topic. It's kind of like when you play Uno. <laughs> And <laughs> it's supposed to be an honest game. Who cheated Uno? It used to just be me. But now, you know, for those of you that's visiting online in the building, and you might not know it, but there was a gentleman that came up here, and he did the exhortation and the welcome. And the Spirit of the Lord felt like it entered the place. Minister Williams. Uh, you know, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm there, and, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm in the moment. I'm in the moment. But I just, I couldn't understand how God could use somebody like him. <laughs> Who a couple of nights ago, we were playing Uno. And I knew the whole time he was cheating. I know there's nothing spiritual about this, but I just got to get it off me. <laughs> and I knew he was cheating because I don't lose like this. So, so, so I, I said, you cheating? And he looked at me smiling, and he would even cheat on his wife, who was sitting right beside him. <laughs> and now we have to do counseling because... Of an Uno game. Well, he got up when the game was over, and there was no shame in his game. Up under his leg. <laughs> now, why? This is going with my sermon. The cards was in the dark until he got up. And then when he got up, 
light shined on the cards. These cards were not a part of the hand that he had. He had a whole second hand up under his card. And it had all the wild cards and all the pulled fours. And then he'll stand up here on Sunday morning. And I believe, Father, I, it's obvious that Pastor Norm and I did not know what we were doing when we asked him to be on the minister's team. So please forgive us. Okay, now I'm back. I feel so much. Whew, I feel so much better. What is the purpose of light? The purpose of light is to illuminate things that are there up under your leg. Or what's in a room, or what you don't know, or what you think you don't know that you might already know. Sometimes you, we're not floundering in life because of a lack of information. It's kind of like when I was at my heaviest weight of 368 pounds. I'm an ex-military guy. I didn't... Had, went, walk around with 368 pounds not knowing what to do. It was a lack of the discipline to do it. I, I had already been illuminated. Light had already been shined. See, one thing if I didn't know that exercise worked. It's another thing if I don't know that every time you walk by a honey bun, it, you can't respond to it calling your name. They literally call it, hey, hey, I'm over here. Vending machines talk to you. And, and, and so, you know, so and, 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 then you, and, and then you tell people, you know, I, I, don't, I, I don't eat that much. <laughs> Unless something is happening to where air is putting weight on, <laughs> you eat, <laughs> you just don't eat in front of people. Uh, that's a whole nother message. But, but so, so, so it's not always that we don't, we don't know. It's a matter of when light has been shined on something, what do you do with it? What is the purpose of something being revealed to you? <laughs> yeah, what is the purpose? Psalm, the 119th book of Psalm, 105th verse or stanza, it reads, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my pathway. Here it is. Whose word? God's word. Your, your word is a and as you, we look at the New Living Translation, same verse of Scripture, it says, your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. The, the word of God is sent to us to, to act as though it, it, it's, a, it, it's a lamp. You know, back in the day, the people used to put little lights on their feet when they walked because that let them see before they stepped, they could see whether or not there was a snake or something, a hole or something. So they, they walked around with little lights on. And the word of God was sent to us to say, you know what? It is supposed to illuminate things that, that, that you've ignored. It's supposed to give you information, direct you into places that you haven't decided that you want to go into yet. Sometimes it's to bring things into our world that maybe I did not know. Because I've had such bad examples. You know, see, you can't hold me accountable for things that I don't know. A lot of times we're trying to hold people accountable thinking that they know what we know when they don't. If I've never been around a, a person that showed me how to be a good parent, it's more likely that I'm going to duplicate what I will experience myself. I think it's right. It's like the story of the girl who used to always cut the end off the ham. You know, you buy a perfectly good ham and every, because you saw mama and them cut the tail off the ham and throw a good piece of ham away and you just say, well, my mama did it, so I'm going to do it. And then one day the question is asked, why do you always cut the tail off that ham? And you don't have a reason. So now you get on the phone and you call your mother. And uh, mother, why do you, why did you always cut the tail off the ham? And mother surprisingly tell you because my pan was not big enough. <laughs> now, that pan that you have is big enough to hold the ham, but because you did not ask questions. You duplicated what you saw without 
studying it, finding out the why behind it all these years. Well, you, you, you thought that every time a child did something wrong, you thought that the solution was to whoop the child, spank them, beat them. <laughs> but it's amazing how if that was the thing, now don't get me wrong, I, I, I do believe that a child should be spanked. But there's a difference between spanking and beating. Some of the things that, that, that some of you in the room, some of you viewing online, uh, that, that wasn't a spanking. People go to jail for that. But you knew how bad you hated, so guess what you did? You came right back and you began to discipline your children the same way, and you justified it because it was done to you as much as you hated, as much as it did not change you. Yeah, yeah, you could, you could whoop this flesh, and then eventually that flesh, <laughs> okay, bring it. Child, I know I, I, when I was a kid, I get in trouble. I go put on about 30 pair of pants, got away one time with it. And, and while Dad was whooping, I was standing like Superman. Come on. That's all you got. It made the wrong sound. He said, boy, that's, no, that's not flesh. He said, take them off. Now you got me and, uh, you know, we had these uh, fruit of the loom. <laughs> and he said, well, I, I, I bought these, so I'm going to spank these fruit of the loom that I bought. Well, it got serious then. But then I could, do, I could duplicate the same thing, see? I could, I could think I'm right, but then I'd be wrong. Why? Because I need something to be illuminated. I need light to be shined on certain things. Many people are failing in life because, guess what? They are doing what they haven't tested. And they're taking advice from people that have not been illuminated in their thought. Yeah, you know, you, you know your, 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 your fifth cousin on your daddy's side who think they know everything. Well, I'm going back to college. Child, that's a waste of time. But I'm going to go start a business. All of them fail in two weeks. <laughs> well, dear God, how many, I ain't going to share nothing else with you. Nothing. Right. Why? Because I need the word of God. It was the word of God that changed my life. It was the word of God that I've told you time and time again. Before the word of God, everything I did, I failed at. Before the word of God, I didn't believe a whole lot was possible. I thought the only thing you could do was sell donuts and co cans and <laughs> copper and <laughs> bottles and, you know, just sell stuff. You know why? Because the people around me, that's what they did. They sold stuff. And I don't, I don't always say what I sold because some of you might, I don't know how far stuff go back. So in my donut days, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, so it was donuts, chocolate donuts, strawberry donuts, you know. Uh, and we go borrow stuff from other people, companies, without their permission, you know. Uh, there was a Nabisco, you know, the cookie people, right down around the corner from us, not far from us. We used to go down there, and they leave the gate open for us. And we go in there, and... We just load up on, on the Bisco cookies. Everybody around us had, we ate well now. We, we ate well. You know, and then they, these trains that they just left open for us. And we'd go in these trains. And one time we went in there, there were these old tables that they used to have all of, I think every person in my neighborhood had a set that where, you know, they were tables, but they had a little burgundy, um, uh, velvet on the inside of them. I think everybody had one. And w we went to the train track and one of the cars was open and we got in there and there was boxes of them. Well, yeah. I felt like they said, come get some. So we took us some. We went and sold them. Yeah. Why? Because see, my life had not been illuminated. Light had not been shined on my life. So I was working off of information that I had gotten, but it wasn't good information. Because this one time we was on this train that we thought we were invited to, and there was this little fellow, he just, he would come down the track and he'd be shining a flashlight. Well, what is he doing here? We got discovered. 
We don't need, you don't need to inspect the place. We got this. Well, we knew that he meant business, so we take off running. And your heart beating, that's when you know, you know you're wrong the whole time. But you want something for nothing because you won't go get the right information. Then when the Lord shined the light on it, say, hey, man, I, you don't have to live like this. It's something when light comes into your world. Light is, revelation is another form of light. It's when you go from not knowing to knowing. It's when you start out not knowing who you are in God and all of a sudden something happens and say, wait a minute, I'm more than this. I'm more than this. Matthew, the fourth chapter, 16th verse. The people who were sitting, living in spiritual darkness have seen a great light. And for those who were sitting, living in the land and shadow of spiritual and moral death, upon them a light has dawned. How many people do you know that at one time was living in darkness? They were resting in it. Not because they chose to be there. It's because sometimes you're sitting in places and you don't know what's on the other side of a decision. What's on the other side of information? How do you go from being who you are if you're not becoming who God created you to be? How do you become what God called you to be? How do you go from being a person that sells donuts or sold donuts to now... Believing that God will supply all my needs. Yeah. How, how do you go from living in the hood to living sometimes? I still marvel. Now, never think that I'm bragging about us. I have to tell you my business because of the position that I hold in this ministry. The Bible says that they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the. Word. So look at what I tell you as a testimony, not bragging, because if you knew me, you would know that I still many days. Because I understand I live a life that I didn't qualify for. I still walk around with tears running down my face. I still stop in awe and say, God, you're just so wonderful. So never think that anything I tell you, that's why I try to tell you my craziness. And then I also try to show you my victories. Why? Because I don't want you to think that we started here. I need you to know that at one time, you know how they talk about you at the bottom of the barrel? Well, there are people that where they flip the barrel over. They, you, no, you up under the barrel. Right, yeah, right. But it was because the Bible changed our lives. Yeah. It's because there's a real God that is actively involved in creation. Yeah. Yeah. It's because there's a real God that if you would trust him, if you would get to the place to where you would say, let light be. That's in any area of your life. Lord, let there be light. What does that mean? That means that I need, I'm operating and I'm receiving things that I don't want and I don't have the right knowledge, the right information to pull it off. Can you illuminate this for me? Can you shed some light on what I need to do in order to be successful? Many people are comfortable because, well, I tried it this time and I tried it that time well, well, the Bible don't tell you about trying. Sometimes you're trying because you're not seeking the right information. You don't supposed to flounder through life. But when you don't have the right information, you're floundering. I know what it feels like to flounder. I tell you the stories about all the network marketing things. I, my God, I'm talking about from Amway selling soap powder to, to selling home learning. <laughs> Woo! That was a hard sale there, boy. I'm talking about those home learning programs where you got about 900 books and the person going to spend a, you know, they haven't even started buying Ebony magazines and I'm in here trying to sell them these, this whole program of books. And I don't even own one. So I sure didn't believe in that product. But I think it paid about $1,300 if you could sell one. Well, I probably sold one and I, probably, I think I sold that to my pastor because there was a Bible part to it. My pastor loved me. That does not mean if you're selling stuff. Don't play me. 
Now, ooh, put my disclaimer out there. I'm not buying nothing. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Holy Ghost, because somebody was thinking in, well, he did that, his pastor did that for him, so I got something I need to sell him. <laughs> nope, not going to do it. John, the eighth chapter, 12th verse. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Why was it so important for Jesus to say that? I am the light of the world. What was, the, what was behind that? When light is presented, that which was once hidden is revealed, unveiled, or made known. So there was something that mankind needed that Jesus was going to bring. Mankind is in darkness. Well, what does darkness mean? Mankind is functioning in a way that God did not intend for mankind to function in. Why is it important that Jesus come after light? There, there, there are new revelations. There are new things that need to be unveiled so that man could work on becoming who God created him to be. Have you ever thought you had it figured out? Have you ever just noted there's more? Have you ever just said, God, there has to be more to my life than this right here? And that's why the Bible says, acknowledge him in all your ways and he'll direct your pathway. What is directing your pathway? He's illuminating your life. He's shedding light on things that you need to know. And now they make sense. Some of you are just one decision away from, from knocking it out the park. You're, you're one decision from turning your life around. Why? why? Because you just need a piece of information. You just need to look in the Bible like I did when I looked in the Bible in Genesis, the first chapter, 23rd down through the 26th verse, when the Bible said God has given Leo dominion. You said, what? Not the Leo that I know. Leo, God has given you dominion. What does that mean? He created you to win. He created you to do things. You don't have to go stealing. You don't have to sell dope. You don't have to go run cons. There's something that he's placed on the inside of you that if you give birth to it, whatever it is, it will change your life. Many times we refuse to get in the posture to give birth to it. Your it is not my it. You're constantly trying to be what you were not born to be or created to be. Why? Because somebody else looked good doing it. You know that old saying, I want to be like Mike. You're working hard, but you're outside of your lane. You're working hard and God's trying to shine. Let there be light. See, I, there was a, a video that Michael Jackson did some years ago, and it's everywhere he stepped, there was light. And, 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 and then there was this video that he made right before he, they were showing him in rehearsal. And, and they, he, 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 the screen was behind Mike, and Mike had to know when to do whatever came next. And they were trying to shine light or do something, and Mike, they said, well, how will you know when it's time? He said something that blew my mind. He said, I can feel it. He said, I can feel it. And, and see, that stuck with me. Why? Because, see, when you're in your lane, when your lane has been illuminated, see, you can, fit, you can feel it. You, you know when you're in the right spot. See, it's something about having a suit on, and it's tailored just for you. See, that's why I need God to speak. See, I, I knew there was something that I was supposed to do. I knew there was a reason as a little boy I would walk and I would hear certain preachers and I would freeze. I just was mesmerized by how they did what they did. I could hear Dr. King and I, oh, this. And it wasn't so much what he said because I didn't understand a lot what he was saying. It was, it was just his voice and him doing what he, what he did. And I, I was fascinated. But, but I, nobody around me that was raising me could tell me who I was. So, so because, see, if, if nobody tells you who you are, then you're more apt to go and become something that you were never intended to be. And then you find yourself just out trying to do what they say. I'm just trying to make a living. So you spend all your life making a living, but not a life. You spend all your time 
fulfilling somebody else's dream when on the inside something is crying out on the inside of you. It's saying, let me be free, but you won't shine light on it. Do you understand when you shine light on it, you give life to it? Things die in darkness. In order for the world to be created, what did the Bible say? The Bible said that, guess what God did? He said, let there be light. And there was. And, and when light came, life came. It's amazing how you had a whole world because the world, he didn't speak the world into existence when he said, let there be light. The world was already there. He just had to reveal what was already there. We used to ask God, Father, let there be light. Let me see who I was created to be. There's an old saying when someone was trying to figure out something. And, and, and you, know, you know how you, you, you're chewing on it. Man, I know the answer to this. I, I, know, the, I know the answer to, to this. And all, as some of the old people say, you know, and then the light bulb came on. Then revelation came. Then the answer came. You need some answers to come. You need some revelation to come. You need, you, you need to know just who you are. Because most of you have, some of you have been called the wrong names, and you've been functioning like that. You, they, call, you know, they say you're stupid. You're dumb. You never amount to anything. And guess what you did? You, 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 you rested in that. You rested in that. But then the, the Bible says that you are the apple of his eye. He says that you're the head and not the tail above only and never beneath. But if, if, if you don't change what has been said and what has been done, then guess what happens? You find yourself in a situation to where you're living based on what others have spoken about you instead of finding out who God created you to be. I need light. Father, let there be light. <laughs> Jesus declares that he is the, the light of the world. Jesus came into a world that was filled with darkness, filled with hatred, filled with all kind of things that did not line up with God's plan for this planet. And here come Jesus. Here come Jesus. He, why did he come? He saw you. Why did he come? He wanted to give you a future. He wanted to give you hope. Jesus is the one and only son of God. Do you know what it took for God to have to send his son to pay the price that Jesus paid so that light could enter this planet? Ephesians, the fifth chapter, 13th verse says, but, but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. The word manifest means clear or obvious to the eye or mind. Something that couldn't be seen, now it's seen. It manifests. It showed up. Ephesians, the fifth chapter, 13th from the Amplified Bible says, but all things become visible when they are exposed by the light of God's precepts. For it is light that makes everything visible. The Amplified Bible says all things become visible when exposed to light. Jesus was saying he is the one who reveal, unveil, make known, and illuminate what was once hidden by darkness. Many Christians are still living in sin. In darkness because they have not invited the light it is amazing how many people will fight to stay in a place that God didn't intend for them to be why because I haven't invited the light I like hanging out in the darkness I like thinking I'm slick I like man I like that I never tell people I lived a miserable life of sin because I wasn't miserable even though I was in sin so sometimes you don't do it because oh, I hate it. You do it because you need to do it because that's the only way you're going to walk into God's plan for your life is to move out of darkness into light. Many Christians are still living in sin because they have not invited the light. When you say, let there be light, you can be delivered from anything. When was the last time you said, let there be light? That's giving God permission to come in and fix it. Yeah, that's, that's saying, God, I, hey, I can't, I can't do this on my own. Because, see, if you have problems with, sex, with your sexual identity, invite the light of Jesus to show you who God created you to be. Now, you know, we don't beat up on people. 
But anything that you're doing that doesn't line up with God's plan, all you got to do is, Father, let there be light. I don't care what people say. It wasn't people talking about me to change me, change my behavior. I didn't care. Say what you got to say. I know it. You ain't telling me nothing I don't know. Well, you're a wretched undone. Okay, I knew that. Tell me. You better tell me something that I don't know. Well, you're a thief. So what? There are others. Well, you know you shouldn't be sleeping with people outside of marriage. Everybody in my neighborhood did that. So, okay, I'm right at home. I ain't coming in your neighborhood. I'm going back to mine. You better tell me something that'll change my life, make me want to change, instead of always holding up in my face what I'm doing wrong, how bad I am. I, if you're doing things you don't have any business doing, you already know. Just like, that's why we ran when the little man with the flashlight came. Come on, I didn't, I didn't find that I was stealing when he came. No, we did it under the cloud of darkness. When all the people had left, we found the train that was open. We went through the Nabisco gate. And then there was one time, I don't know why I'm telling you all my business, I live right across the street from the place that used to make Pepsis and 7-Up sodas. I'm talking about right across the street from me. So some of my friends, we decided that we were going <laughs> to, we're going to go get us some sodas. Told you, we never went hunting because everything that we needed was right around us. So this one particular time, they cut the hole in the fence, and I'm no lookout dude. Well, you're supposed to whistle when the, when the police come. I don't know why the police came while I was on watch. Because when the police came, I'm trying to whistle. But the whist Oh, then it didn't come. So, because I knew we were wrong, after the whistle didn't come, it's all man boys for themselves. So I took off running. Now, because my friends had not had light to shine on them, when they finally caught back up with me, they called me some names, just ugly names, but you can say what you want, I was going to be free. I don't know where that came from, but some of you might want to be, the, might be on the verge of being the watch guy. Don't do it. Don't do it. Because the whistle will leave you. That, I'm talking about I'm blowing sprinkles out my mouth. It was just awful. If you don't know what sprinkles is, you have fluid that's in your mouth. You know, so, you know, so whatever you want to do with it, with your proper self. If you have, see, you have to say, let, let there be light, no matter where you find yourself. Because this let there be light is between you and God. It, it, it's, I, I didn't change because I was trying to impress people. I needed a savior. What I was doing was not working. So if, you're, if, if you are a person that, that's having sexual relationships outside of marriage, Give light permission to shine in your life. This is not to condemn you. This is to free you. That was a song I think they said, put a ring on it. Get your, put a ring on it. If you are a Christian and, and you find it hard to stop smoking cigarettes, marijuana, prescription drugs, or drinking alcohol, Allow God to shine light on your situation. This is not to condemn you. This is to free you. Why? Because the Bible says your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. God has a plan for your life. The devil has put things in place to derail your life. I want you to be free. I, I, I want you to live your best life. I want when heaven needs somebody to go on assignment, I need for heaven to call you and say, hey, go over there and do this and do that. And then this last one here is, if you are a person that gossips, mm, Shaba, if you are a person that gossips, you know, the church, we, a lot of that happens in the church. 
or find yourself participating in conversation that you know is wrong ask God to let shine light on it why do you stop holding conversations especially when they can get back to people and hurt them yeah 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 Lord shine light on it why because see then sometimes people see you coming they run from you if you're that person oh dear God here come Leo oh a whole bag of neg negativity so they hide from you don't do that to yourself okay now whew, we're past that part there Jesus said that he is the light of the world. What was the purpose of Jesus presenting himself as light? Mankind had been walking around in, sp in a spiritual fall and not knowing the why of life. What is your why? If I, if I, if I met one of you right now, if I just came out in the audience and I gave, asked for a mic and I can't just selected somebody and said, what is your why? What is your, because you, if you don't know your why, you're going to flounder. If you don't know your why, you're going to be on, out there doing stuff you hate to do. I remember I was a cashier. I'd go in that place, stand behind that cash register, and, 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 and a gorilla meet me every, every day, right? They're sitting on my shoulder, just sitting on my shoulder. I'd say, oh, Jesus. You know, and then I, they come in. I'm trying to smile, but I hate it. Oh, God, I hate it. Paper or plastic? And I don't care. I really, I don't, I don't care if you, I don't care if you grab your stuff up in your arms and leave. I just want you gone. <laughs> but if I don't know my why, I'm going to do like some of you. You have been doing things that you hate. But you don't have a why, so you do it every day. And you don't have the courage to leave. Don't leave like I did. Because I just walked in one day. Well, and I believe that there was... <laughs> I believe I had a let light be moment. Because I walked in there, I said, this Leo Davis that you see today, you will never see him again. And I left. The problem was, it was some days that passed by before my wife knew it. Because I got up every day like I was going to work. <laughs> she said, uh-uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm hoping I find me another job before. My why? I didn't know my why. I knew where I wasn't supposed to be. But if I would have known what I'm telling you now, before I made a move, before I took that cashier's job, and they kept my last check. <laughs> Yeah. But if I would have known what I know now, I would have said, Father, shine light on this situation. Before I sold Amway, I would have said, Father, shine light on this here. Before I've sold those water purification things that I didn't sell one of. It's always amazing how Pastor Norman like to give you amens. She likes to give you amens. <laughs> Unless you and I let there be light, we will never be able to experience the God kind of life. God is not just shining light on things. He's telling you who you are. Who are you? I'm not talking about the name that your parents gave you. Who are you? When heaven look at you, what do they see? Because, see, you could run around and you could be all out of place. You could be doing things that you don't need to be doing, hating it, but feeling as though you're stuck. Don't be stuck. Don't be stuck. <laughs> when you find yourself in a situation where you, do, where you don't know what to do, Father, I'm confused. But instead of claiming confusion, Father, let there be light. I don't know what to do with these bills. Let there be light. I, I, I don't, I'm talking about I'm broke, I'm broke as a joke. Let there be light. My children acting up. Father, let there be light. I'm on a job that I hate. Let there be light. My body's acting up, Lord. Let there be light. See, sometimes we're going through sickness and we need to be saying let there be light because you think there's no cure, but there's a cure for everything. 
Sometimes you just need to change your diet. Uh oh. Because if not, you have friends that look at every cookie that you eat. Are you supposed to be eating that? Lord, let there be light. You need to eat more carrots. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> What is that thing that, that, that's causing you problem that you need to get control of? What is, it, what is that thing to where I, I wake up every day and I'm battling with this thing? Where's that? What's that? What is that where you think you don't have any hope? What, what is this thing that causes you to quit every time? Before you get started, you quit. You quit before you even start. Let there be light. What is it that God wants you to do? Why were you created? Because if you don't understand that, guess, what's my, guess what might happen? You might find yourself at the end of life where you're bo you were born full and you die full. I told many of you the thing about when I read this book by Miles Monroe uh, some years ago when it said the, the wealthiest place in the world. Say, where's the wealthiest place in the world? And he said, the cemetery. I paused and I thought, I said, what did you say? That's a place where things die. Or they put dead things. He said, because many people travel through life and they don't make a deposit. Many people come through life, they're born full. God give you something to give to the planet and you will not give birth. So you're born full, you die full, and you take your gifts, talents, abilities to the grave. And the book went on to say that there are paintings that were never painted, books that were never written, songs that were never sang. Why did God give it to you? He didn't give it to you to sit on it or to make excuses why you don't use it. He gave it to you because somebody on the planet needs what he's placed on the inside of you. It is serious for you to become. It is serious for you to see what God sees. When God look at you, what do he see? Well, my job is to see what he sees. Because if not, you live a counterfeit life. You're walking around perpetrating, living a life of pretend. And it's a bad thing when you live a life of pretend that you don't even like. At least if I'm going to play pretend, I'm going to play dress up and be what? I've always dreamed of. I ain't going to walk around and put on the clothes and talk about, man, I hate this outfit here when I got control to put them on and take them off. What do you see? And the last scripture. Ephesians, the fifth chapter, eighth, the ninth verse. When you ask God, say, let there be light, and you step into the light, Ephesians, the fifth chapter, eighth and ninth verse says, for once you were full of darkness, but now you have the light from the Lord. So live as people of light. For this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. You move from being people who once flowed in darkness. I have one more scripture. I got to read this one here. Psalm 50, the 56th uh, chapter, 13th verse. It says, God, this is from the Message Bible. It says, God, you did everything you promised. And, I, and I'm thanking you with all my heart. You pulled me from the brink of death, my feet from the cliff edge of doom. Now I stroll at leisure with God in the sunlit fields of life. Why is it important to move from darkness to light? It's important because some of you are in route right now to the cliff edge of doom. But when God shines light on it, you want to live a leisure life with God in the sunlit fields of life. You want to live what, the, what we call the good life. You want to live a life to where every day you wake up and it's a vacation. Saying, oh God, I can't wait for the sun to come up. 
Why? Because I am anticipating great things. You wake up and say, instead of, man, I hate to see the day. I can't wait to see all that God has for me. I can't wait to give birth to what God has placed on the inside of me. I can't wait to see how wonderful my family has turned out. Why? Because let there be light. Lord, we are the Davises. Only good things come for the Davises. You better put your name in there. Say, the blessings of the Lord maketh me rich and addeth no sorrow. Why? Because you shine light on this thing. You gave me permission when the storms of life come. I stand like Jesus and I command you to cease. Shut up. Don't say another word. Why? Because I'm God's son. I'm his beloved. Stand to your feet. Yeah, go on and rest on your feet as we used to say in the military. <laughs> I want you to repeat after me. Say, Father God, I give you permission to let light be. I thank you for shining light in every dark place of my life. I thank you, Lord, that as the light covers my world, things begin to blossom. I thank you, Lord, that dead things are now coming alive. I thank you, Lord, where there was confusion. Now there's clarity. I thank you, Lord, that good things seek me out. I thank you, Lord, that I walk in revelation, knowledge. I thank you, Lord, that the Holy Ghost is constantly revealing those things that were once unknown. He's making them known to me. Thank you, Father, for my future is bright. Thank you, Lord. I see what you see. I believe what you said. I trust you. And my life is the better because I'm focused. I can see clearly now. Thank you, Lord. Father, I bless you. I honor you. I give you praise for you are a good God. Thank you, Father, for being my Jehovah Jireh. Thank you, Lord, for being my Jehovah Shalom. Thank you, Lord, for being my everything. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for sending the Lord Jesus to light up this world. Thank you, Jesus, for following the orders of the Father. Give God a big praise. Come on, give him a big praise. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for being the light of the world. Thank you, Jesus, for paying the price. Thank you, Father. Oh, we bless you, Lord. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We give you glory and honor. We magnify you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You're still the God in the midnight hour. You're still the God that turn it around. You're still the God that make crooked places straight. You're still the God that hold the world in your hand. And we give you praise today, Father. We give you glory and honor. We magnify you. For there is none. There is none. For Father, Father, if our bodies are wrecked with pain and the doctors don't know what to do, we scream out, Father, let there be light. If you are, if, a, if you're on an emotional roller coaster, we say, Father, let there be light. If you cannot figure out how to get uh, your head around your finances, your life, let there be light, Father. Let there be light. And Father, we thank you that you said in your word, if anyone lack wisdom, 
we can ask of you and you will give it unto us you will shed light on those areas and you will do it liberally so father we honor you in the name of Jesus that name that is above every name hallelujah now with all heads bowed and all eyes closed there's someone, whether you're listening online or whether you're in the building, you need to say, let there be light. And the light that you need for there to be is the light to let you understand that the Lord Jesus, God's only begotten Son, He came to the planet not only to let there be light, but He came on a rescue mission. He came to rescue us. We were in trouble. And maybe you're one of those people that have never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. Well, this is your day. I'm going to give some information. I'm going to shed light on some things. And then I want you to make a educated, calculated decision. If you are a person who has never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I need for you to listen carefully and there's going to become a time when I need you to repeat after me. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I need for you to repeat after me. Say, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Everybody repeat after me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your love for me. Father, I choose this day to make Jesus Christ the Lord of my life. I believe in my heart and I'll confess with my mouth that Jesus, you are the Son of God and you were raised from the dead. And the Bible says that now I am born again. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Then there's another group out there at one time or another, you did make Jesus the Lord of your life. But you know you haven't been living the Christian life the way that you should. First of all, God is not mad with you. But you do need to make it right. So if everyone would, please repeat after me. Say, Father God, I choose this day to ask your forgiveness for every sin that I've committed. I ask God that you would forgive me. And I thank you for your love for me. And from this day forward, I'm going to live my life serving you. I choose this day to change whatever needs to be changed and follow you, Jesus. So thank you for forgiving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a big round of applause. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. For those of you that gave your life to Jesus for the very first time, or if you rededicated your life, we have a gift that we want to give to you, but I do need for you to do something for me. I want to give you this little pamphlet, but first I need for you to text the word choice. That's whether you're viewing online or if you're in the building. If you gave your life to Jesus for the very first time, or if you rededicated your life, text the word choice to 904-977-2507. Text the word CHOICE to 904-977-2507. We would love to get you a copy of this little pamphlet that says yes. It's a quick read, but it will answer some of the questions that you may have pertaining to the decision that you made today. And one last thing, heaven is having a party right now on your behalf. And we, the partners of Love Alive Church, we would like to say congratulations. Welcome to the family of God, or welcome back where you belong. Give our Jesus a big round of applause.